Hi, this is your math professor, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about mixed equations. This is a mixed equation. It's from my math lab, but I copied it to make the print a little larger. The goal, the goal with mixed equations is to get your x's together, well, to get your variable terms together on one side of the equal sign and the constant or number terms together on the other side. So let's do that. I'm starting out with 9x plus 42 equals 4x minus 13. Now, if I add the opposite of 4x, which will be negative 4x, to both sides of the equation, like this. Then 4x plus negative 4x zeroes out because they're opposites. Whenever you add opposites, you get zero. And you're left with negative 13. Remember, this is really plus negative 13. So negative 13 is what you're left with. Meanwhile, over here, you're going to have 9x plus negative 4x. 9 plus negative 4 is positive 5, so this will be 5x. And bring down the plus 42. We've got step 1 done. Now, I'm going, I, I, I've got one variable term now. That's good. I have a constant term and a constant term. I need to get this constant term with this constant term. So I'm going to add the opposite of the constant term I'm trying to move to both sides of the equation. So the 42 plus negative 42 is 0, leaving me with 5x. Copy my equal sign down. Try to keep your equal signs in a vertical line. You're less likely to make mistakes if you do that. Now, when you add two negative numbers, all you do is add the number part and put a negative in front. So 3 plus 2 is 5, and 1 plus 4 is 5. So right now, my equation is 5x equals negative 55. I'm going to divide both sides by 5 because now I've got 5 times x and I divide by that coefficient. So divide that side by 5 and this side by 5. These 5's cancel out, leaving me with x. Over here, I'm going to have negative 55 divided by positive 5. Negative divided by positive is negative, and 55 divided by 5 is 11. Now, look at that. They're actually asking me to solve it. Select the correct choice. OK, well, what I'm going to do is put negative 11 in here. And now, because I don't have the uh, uh, computer to tell me if I'm right or wrong, doggone it, I'm going to have to check the answer in the old-fashioned way. So here we go. I've got. 9x plus 42 equals 4x minus 13. And for the x, I'm going to put in my answer, negative 11. So 9 times negative 11 plus 42 is going to equal, I hope it's going to equal, 4 times negative 11 Let's change that minus 13 to plus negative 13. Whoops, I'm falling off the edge of the paper. There. OK, 9 times negative 11. Positive 9 times negative 11 is negative 99 plus 42 equals negative 44 plus negative 13. 
Okay, now, now we don't have to be old fashioned anymore. Now we can actually just use the uh, calculator. Let's try it. Negative, remember it's the negative sign. Negative 99 plus 42, enter. All right, this says negative 57. Now, negative 44 plus negative 13, enter. That's negative 57. It's true that negative 57 equals negative 57. So since we have a true answer here, that means that this is the right answer. For, for our x. That's the right solution to the equation. And we can be happy about that. Okay, let's do one more. And this one is a doozy. This is called a rational equation. It's got fractions in it. And there's a trick to solving it. What you do is this. You look at the denominators. Here there are three denominators. You're looking at 6 and 5 and 10. And you're going to ask yourself, what is the smallest number that 6 and 5 and 10 will all go into? OK. Well, in this case, your calculator can help you. I'm going to click on math and then I'm going to click the right arrow key. You would do this with your fingers. Push the right arrow key so that now num is highlighted. Come all the way down to LCM. That's almost like LCD so it's easy to remember. The LCM and the LCD are really the same basic thing. Now, what you can do is, if you go ahead and hit enter there at number 8, you can add two numbers at a time. Not add them, but put them, and I'll show you how. Let's work with the 6 and the 5 first. I'm going to say, six. Now, here's the new key, the comma. Punch the comma key, and then 5, and then parentheses, and hit Enter. This just told you that the lowest number that 6 and 5 will go into is 30. Now, all you need to do is find the LCM of 30 and 10, the last number here. All right, so. You can probably do that part in your head, but let's, let's do it the whole way, this way, in the calculator. Uh, I'm going to go down, 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 down to LCM. And I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm going to put 30 and 10, or 10 and 30, doesn't matter. 10, comma, 30, paren. What is the smallest number that both 10 and 30 will go into evenly? It's 30. So now we have our LCD, which is the same thing in this case as an LCM. I am going to take the original equation and I'm going to multiply each term by 30. All right, first I'm going to write the equation with leaving room to write the number 30. 5, 6, x. Now, this is plus a negative. Plus negative 1 fifth x plus 4 equals oops, 7 tenths x. There. Now, I'm going to put 
multiply this by 30. And since 5 6 is a fraction, I'm going to multiply by 30 over 1. And since negative 1 1 fifth is a fraction, I'll turn my 30 into a fraction and multiply by 30 over 1. 4 is not a fraction, so I'm just going to multiply by 30. And 7 tenths is a fraction, so I'm going to multiply by 30 over 1. Now I'm going to do something called cross-canceling. This 6 will go into 30 five times. So 6 goes into 6 one time, 6 goes into 30 five times. 5 will go into 30 six times. So 5 goes into 5 one time, 5 goes into 30 six times. Here, all you have to do is multiply. 30 times 4 is 120. And we're multiplying 30 over 1 by 10 over 7. 10 goes into 30 three times, and 10 goes into itself one time. So now I have 5 times 5 times x all over 1. So it's 25x plus 6 times, one, times negative 1. Don't forget your negative. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6x plus 120 equals 3 times 7 times x is 21x. Whew. So now I'm going to, on the left side of the equation, I'm not going to move any terms yet. I'm going to get these two like terms together. 25 plus negative 6 is 19. I'll have 19x plus 120 equals 21x. OK, I have a variable term, a constant term, a variable term. I'm going to move this variable term over here with this, con uh, with this variable term, leaving the constant term by itself. And since there's, I have to add to do this, I'm going to add the opposite of 19x after I move the sheet of paper up. So I'm going to add negative 19x and I'm going to add negative 19x. 19x plus negative 19x is 0, leaving me with 120 on the left. And 21x minus 19x, well, I know that 21 minus 19 is 2, so I'll have 2x. When you add and subtract, you keep your x term. Now, I've got 2x equals 120. If I divide by 2 and divide by 2, these 2's will cancel. 120 divided by 2 is 60. And so the answer I get is 60 equals x. But I'm not 100% sure it's right, am I? So I'm going to have to check my answer. Have to switch to another piece of paper here. Oh, no I don't. Maybe I can use the bottom of this. My original equation is 5, 6, x plus negative 1 fifth x plus 4 equals 7 tenths times x. I'm going to put 60 in for all the x's. So 5, 6 times 60, and I'll make that 60 over 1, plus negative 1 fifth times 60 over 1 plus 4. Now 4 does not have a six, uh, an x, so there's no place for me to put a 60. Equals 7 tenths times 60. And since it's a fraction, I'll put 60 over 1. Now, I need to get the same answer on the left as I get on the right. Let's see if it happens. 6 goes into 60 10 times, so 5 times 10 is 50 plus, 
Okay, this is negative, negative one-fifth. Five goes into 60 12 times. So 12 times negative one is negative 12 plus four equals, over here we're going to get 10 divided into 60 is six, and seven times six is 42. Now, 50 minus 12, 50 minus 12 is 38 plus 4 is 42. So we have 42 equals 42. That's true. So 60 really is my answer. And back in my math lab, I would put 60 in the, uh, in the answer box. Okay, we're done. Talk to you later. Bye.